It's time once again for a couple of cold ones with Corey and Carlisle. Got the Modelo this week, man. Uh-huh. This is you, You're getting wise, man. This, yeah, you know, this Modelo is the good stuff. Especial. It's the Especial that makes it. It's not the Modelo, because you could get Modelo Negro, which is still good. Yeah. But this is Especial. Well, see, somebody just, I just answered someone tonight who said, what is your favorite beer? And I was like, eh, we don't really have one, but I'm just not realizing that I really like this beer. Yeah, you were excited when I got it. And I was yeah, like, I know. I, when I bought it tonight, I was like, you know what? He's going to be, what, you got Modelo again? Uh-uh, like, man. No, you sure enough, you were that. like, man, I was excited. It's like, all right, I think we found our beer for a while. I'm ready to get drunk. I want to get fucked up. Ooh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good stuff, man. I really appreciate you thinking that way. Yeah, you consider it. So let's go ahead and get into uh, the top five. Already? Jeez, let's just uh, jump into it. Wait, you, I, I don't mind jumping into no, no it. No pleasantries, no nothing, no foreplay. Just just jump into it, pull, do the deed, and get done. Pull them panties down, and let's do this. And then get your ass out of my house. Not yeah. just you. I tell that to all the girls. I'm done. Don't no. Don't don't go in my kitchen looking for something. I passed to eat. Get several out. of them on the curb. It was. Uh, <laughs> they had all been kicked. It was yeah, really they, they, depressing. They had their panties in their hands, walking down the street crying. Yeah. So no, I figured since we're wrapping this up in an hour every week, we'll bullshit that, uh, bullshit afterwards. But we'll just go ahead and jump to the top five so we can get some uh, some time afterwards to do what we do to cuddle. To, again, there you go. A little, yeah. a little afterglow. Exactly. Hey, man, the quicker we can do this, the All quicker right, I can cuddle so with you before I kick it. you out. Number five. Damn, action packed. Number that, five. That one was woo, but I'm, I, that that exhausted me just hearing that. Sending chills. Number uh, five. Number five is Wanted. Wow, that movie's done well, man. It has. It's you know what? It's a good film. Uh, uh, I, I did enjoy it. It's it's not perfect, and there's people who hate the shit out of it, and I totally understand why they do, but. You know what? It's a fun little movie. Well, like I said, I thought they had a better idea with the comics, and they could have changed it around to 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 uh, to accommodate or even a rated R movie, but or even a PG thirteen movie. But I look, I liked the first half, and if, I always, like I always say, if people enjoyed it, whatever. I just really thought that that last half was extremely dumb. I, you know the, the exposed oh, well, rats no, the whole, and everything. What, the last half, the first half, the entire movie was dumb. No, it the was first big half loud was, and dumb. Well, the first half was just fantasy, and I could take that. The second half, they just like fuck it, put dynamite on rats and just let them blow up all kind of shit. I was like, man, they don't, they don't even care at this point. So, but hey, movies made 112 million dollars so far, so good for them. Number four is. You know, you know, I jumped you, on you. You just, just you, you just pointed at me. You're like number four isn't like I, I fucking know. No, you know, I pointed at you because I was like, wow. I should have let you sing that. I do whatever it is that you're doing this week. This action. Number thing. four. What is going on with you anyway? You just had some coffee or something? What's that? What's... Actually, I've been drinking coffee today. And uh, you know what? I'll blame it on the – it's called The Boss. I got it at uh, Thunderbird Coffee House. It's called The Boss. It is a large 20-ounce chai latte with – Three shots of espresso in it. They're just getting sick with this shit. They're just getting crazy. They, they just, no, that's, that, that's they're just making formulas. To, I have a special drink that I order when I'm downtown at the hideout. What, and what is it? it you know, when I, it's because the hideout is right, you know, right next to the, uh, to to the, the Paramount. Paramount. Yeah. So when I'm down there, I get, uh, I get myself a, uh, uh, a cafe mocha with uh, uh, a triple cafe mocha with triple the normal shots of espresso. So it's got six shots of espresso in it. It's, uh, see... Th- this shit is getting crazy. It's like a mad scientist experimenting with well, shit now. You know, you, speaking, you know, we were talking about Wanted, you know, where the whole world kind of slows down. Yeah, you, your heart is beating so fast that everything you exactly. see is slow motion. That's why I drink, I drink that and I could savor every second and move at the speed of light and kick tons see, of ass. See, I don't even drink coffee. And I, it's not because I got something against coffee. I just never did it. And now, now, you, you, you motherfuckers are going, somebody's chest is going to explode someday with the concoctions that you guys are making. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. But then again, and you're, you're looking at the guy that when I was a kid, I used to take Jolt Cola and put in a scoop of strawberry quick and slide in some pixie sticks. And then I would down that. You know what? That explains so much. It now explains so you. much. Because <laughs> you don't even notice. But when you're sitting there, your eyes just blink like you are out of control. Did, has anybody ever told you that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like it's like you're, you're know, Samantha from Bewitched. It's like you're, you're trying to it's, make something happen. It's it's not only that. Uh, my I actually my leg shakes at almost every point <laughs> of the day, um, and including. And this is what I'm not even on caffeine. This is just nat- I was wired naturally to you know. I'm like Thumper from fucking Bambi, dude. It's just my legs going. My leg does that in my sleep. Oh, is that what it, is that was happening? 
Yeah. Like I, I look over sometimes, and your leg is doing that. That's right. I, I feel like I should like put some spoons in your hand and like let them go Spoon against your knees. Spoon man, <laughs> feel <laughs> the rhythm in your hands. <laughs> it's like, got fucking bojangles over here. <laughs> but Mr. anyway, bojangle. Let's get to no, number four. N- number four. I don't know what number four is. I, I can look at the list. Me, I, I told so you, you, you I was at home watching a movie. I told you do this thing you every week where you Number sing. four. Okay, there you go. You got to be consistent. Or else I'm going to be I already off. did it. But okay. Number four. All right, Wally. Duffman says number four is excellent. <laughs> Wally. Yeah, Wally. After, after Wally. three weeks, I knew you were going to do that. And I you, had to. You and Cyrus, man, you guys just can't. You, you cannot say Wally without you guys doing that on the side. Wally. And it's fucking scary. Because Wally me. is awesome dude he is the man and did did you read any of this horse shit this week where the conservative uh, like the ultra conservatives just went oh, all nuts Jesus. over wally what, what what they what was wrong now well see what's wrong now is goddamn that we have, cartoon robot we have so polarized this country that uh <laughs> if you if you so much as point out that there's a problem that somebody doesn't want to believe exists then you are the devil see now i is I it totally, the pollution thing yeah, exactly. Oh, because Jesus, is, because how dare they? How dare they assault consumerism and and, and talk about ecological devastation? Because and, and obesity. How dare they attack the foundations of this country? It's like dude, they're, they're pointing out problems to kids and saying, "Hey, these these are kind of problems. You might want to watch out for that." They're not telling. There's, they they don't make any solutions. They don't condemn anyone for it. If anybody gets condemned in this, it's, it's Walmart. It's a fucking robot, and, 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 no, and, and the no, movie no, 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 takes no. like seven hundred years into the future. It I mean, is not the, just a robot. They, there really are these messages there, but the problem oh, is, yeah. is they have a problem that there's a message, even though the message isn't definitive in any way, shape, or form, oh. even though it doesn't actually tell kids anything except to – raise their level of consciousness about certain problems existing. Oh, no, I know what you're saying. It's 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 these assholes out here who they're scared to face up to any kind of truth at all. And so what do they do? They just they find some sort of way to to sidetrack the problem by saying and, and by countering you by saying, how dare you talk about America or how dare you throw these lies out there and scare our children? It's like, you know, fucking wake up. Lies Shit, my man. ass. Have you been to Walmart? Exactly. You know Shit. what? I want... Any conservative that has a problem with consumerism, and this is coming from a conservative, you know, if you have a problem with consumerism, I want you to go and spend two hours at your nearest Walmart on Friday night between the hours of 10 and midnight. Because not only will you see the consumerism up front, but you will see that parking lot looks like a fucking apocalypse out there when they're done. Not only that. All that trash out there from teenagers just hanging out. And not only that, but, you know, there's, there's a saying. You know, um, you know how dumb the average person is. Well, mathematically speaking, half of them are stupider than that. Yeah, that part other of that half <laughs> spreads their Friday nights at Walmart. And yeah. if you want to pull your hair out to put to taste the cold taste of steel in your mouth as you put the gun against the roof of your mouth because you cannot stand humanity any longer, if you need that feeling. You should go to Walmart between 10 and midnight on a Friday night. Oh, yeah. No, really. You got the people out there with their cars and shit. And every morning they they sweep that parking lot of all the trash. And I think there's like a teenager or two out there that they pull up in the pile. So, I mean, it's it's fucked up. I mean, I don't understand why people have a problem with you just pointing out problems that are happening around us. Like I said, unless they're just scared. I mean, it's I don't, I don't even want to get into politics right now. But anyway, number three. Number three. <laughs> Journey to the center of the earth. Wow, it, that only got the number three. He huh? did number three. I mean, nobody expected it to do number one, but number three. Now, I thought it would be number. You know, I no, honestly, let me. Go, I'm looking at this now. I actually did think Hancock would beat it, and and, and it comes up to what I expect. It got twenty million dollars. Now and I that's not so bad. I haven't seen this yet, and I talked to several people who said it was a lot of fun. Then one of my friends referred to it in a review as a big uh, bowl of steaming dick. And, Damn, and not of, not just a steaming dick, but a, a bowl, a bowl of steaming of, dick. A, he, a <laughs> like big they took the heaping bowl of steaming dick. They is couldn't. What he they, it. they took the dick and actually put it in a bowl, like <laughs> it's, they, and, 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 and it's, steamed that it. Means it's got to be served. So that shit was chopped up and they, baked, sautéed, yeah. thrown a little spice on it, and served up as a big bowl of steaming dick. And like it got cold, and they reheated it and put it back out there again. I look, man. I will tell you this from someone who has seen it that it. You can look at it two ways because I can't argue with this person. It is the dumbest thing I've seen this summer. It truly is the dumbest thing I've seen this summer. I won't even go into why because it's, it's a long ass list. But I was easy on it because, first of all, they get you with the 3D, man. You got to go see it in the theater. So for us, we couldn't say anything but matinee because if you don't watch it at home, 
I mean, if you do watch it at home, you're missing out and it's going to be a bad movie. The other thing is that it's, again, one of those blockbusters for kids. You take the family to, to see a movie. The kids are going to have a great time. It's like when everybody jumped my shit for talking about Miley Cyrus in 3D, or, or Hannah Montana, whatever. I did that because it's a 3D experience, and kids love that. And it was harmless, and so is this. I mean, it's dumb. Unless, and, uh, unless you think this is going to like make your kid a little dumber than they already are. <laughs> and at that point, it, it, you can't help them. It's, it's a fun movie. They're going to spend their Friday nights at Walmart. They're going to grow up to like be that motherfucking Walmart in the parking lot. Yeah. Man, I remember the days when I used to play with my slide <laughs> rule and get on the internet and learn stuff. And then I went to that Miley Cyrus movie and boy, and how it, did I like her? And it was just <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, the movie made 20 million. It, I, I did expect it to do a little bit better, but whatever. It's but a, not it's this a, weekend. Not, this not week, up huh? against the horned menace. But let's go to number two, which is number two. Hancock. Hancock. It made 33 million. Not bad for a second week. And yeah, it's no, already it's, up to $165 million. Man, this is after two weeks. That's Will Smith, baby. The power of the Smithster. Fourth of July, boy. He ain't fucking around with Fourth of July. I mean, he they is like. Not. Happy Will Smith Day. I'm telling you, it's going to be his holiday in the future. Uh, and number one. Number one is. Hellboy 2, The Hell Golden Army. Hellboy 2. Which I'm, I, everybody knew was going to be number one. Well, it's, sure. Yeah, this, it, was, it was a weekend where it had really nothing to go against except Hancock. And, and Hancock, it was you know. awesome. I don't think it was. I, I know just, you don't, don't. But then know. again, somebody touched you when you were a child and you lost your soul. And I yeah, understand a, that. A big red devil touched me when I was a That's kid. That's where this movie was fucking awesome. I love the shit. Out I don't of think movie. it was awesome. I think it's great. I, know if you don't. I think it's great if you're 13 and a lot of 13 year olds have been online talking about this movie was better than sex. I'm like, okay, you're 13. That's great. That's wonderful. It, it's a great movie to look at. I think if you're an adult. Uh, it's, I don't think it's a great movie story wise though. In fact, I'd go as far as to say this is pretty fucking stupid. But I wouldn't say it's stupid by any stretch of the imagination. But is there a deep story? Oh fuck no! You, oh, and here's the other thing: the movie is. Every, I've talked to two people who have said, "Wow, man, I've never seen anything like this before." I'm like. Uh, you probably have twice, uh, 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 Man in Black and Man in Black 2. No, it, no, no, the, the no, beginning of, no. The beginning of that movie rips off Man oh, in God. Black so no, no, much. No, 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 There's that scene that is a lot that, – that definitely is, is evocative of Men in Black 2. I definitely got that. But to say that, that – Men in Black, the creature design in Men in Black was just so. Mediocre. I'm not even talking about the creature And the creature movie design. was no. When they people say we've never no. seen anything like this, they're talking about things like the troll market. They're talking about the design of the elemental. No, go fact, watch Labyrinth. That was like the troll market. Well, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing is this is like this is this is very much Brian Froud taken to the next level. But I, keep in mind, I'm not. Look, it's just like I've said with anything. I I don't care what people think about me. I didn't think the movie was all that great, but just, I did have a fun time watching it. I mean, God damn it. This movie looked, it looked great. I just thought it was awesome to watch. I had no problems giving it a matinee and watching it. I, I had love. no problem with the money the movie made. For me, I thought that could have been a better written movie and it could have been a better movie all in all, all overall, but it served its purpose. People liked it. The fans who are fans of Hellboy apparently don't have a problem with it at all. No, I'm, I love the first book. But then again, the, the, the main point, what you edited out of the review is none of you guys liked the first Hellboy. No, and I, that's what so, I'm saying. So I'm so not going to be... So coming into uh, the, the, the big thing with this movie is if you didn't like Hellboy, you're not going to like Hellboy 2. But see, I did like this movie. I'm just saying I thought it was stupid. I liked it all right. I thought it was great. To, a, lot of, a lot of fun visually. I, look, I'm not going to go in here loving it because, yeah, it's, the same, it's almost the same tone as the first Hellboy. And I like this movie actually than the first Hellboy. I thought this was a lot of fun to watch. So, I it's, it's I guess I maybe I'm laying things out a little bit wrong because well, when well, I come in and say it's stupid, a lot of, I do know I lead people to, to believe that all right, he must hate the movie because he used that word stupid. But I mean, because the, the thing is, is the way you describe it. I mean, it, it's like those guys who say, "Yeah, she's not that good looking, and she's dumb as dirt, but man, she knows how to suck a dick." I mean, that's that's how you're describing this film. Is yeah, it's retarded, but you know what? It was a good time. Well, I had it. I've never been gone down on by Hellboy, but uh, <laughs> if you want to make that analogy, then yes. I, I Look, like I said, I knew the movie was going to do well. It's a sequel. It, it, it had a built-in audience that was going to make it a success. Yeah, and, and so, it was directed yeah. by Guillermo del Toro, who and fucking rules. I think Guillermo del Toro rules when he does stuff in Spanish. I think when he comes into America, that shit just goes out the window. I, Except I like Blade 2. What? See, the, that's mm. the thing is, uh, you know, when the movies he's made in America, he makes his big, loud, 
fun movies here. He's an intelligent guy that loves loud, oh, fun yeah. movies. Now, I think you're going to have to retract that statement when The Hobbit comes out. No, <clears throat> and I will, because The Hobbit is a concrete story, a very good story. And, and, his, and it's got yeah. a lot of people behind it, and I think with him doing it and him telling the story with Peter Jackson overseeing it, I think that's going to be incredible, and I think that's going to be the perfect film to kind of bridge it, because he doesn't, he doesn't want to tell a loud, fun story there. He wants to make a serious fantasy film, and there's, there's no better guy working in fantasy right now than Del Toro. Um, I don't know, Peter Jackson. Well, Let's Peter, no, Peter Jackson isn't a fantasy ma- filmmaker. He just made, you know, the Lord of the Rings movies. But, I, you know, Guillermo del Toro, like I said, I'm looking forward. To, I'm so much looking forward to what he does with The Hobbit. Like I said, that's one of my favorite stories. If I didn't think he was a good director or a brilliant guy, I would be all up in arms about that. I got that motherfucker to direct The Hobbit. What the hell are they thinking? But no, I'm th- when I heard that, I was like, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. If, so I have nothing Jackson against him. Jackson is doing it. Del Toro is the the next guy. You want to know the truth? I would have rather seen Guillermo del Toro direct the Lord of the Rings series. If you ask me, I I, I that I mean I I just think that guy is so much more of a visionary. That's just me. Yeah, though. except that back at the time, he he. The thing is with Del, I love Guillermo. I mean, I really love his work. But you can actually see him grow throughout his films and mm-hmm. learn from making each film. I mean, you look at Kronos and Mimic and Blade Two, and and then you know, uh, uh, Devil's Backbone, and you can watch him evolve as a storyteller and get into his groove. Yeah, I mean, I see that's the problem. I mean, I'm I'm able to separate a director from a body of work. I mean, and take them individually. I just I think his loud dumb movies, as you say, are just that loud and dumb. I don't. I, being a story person, don't always agree with that when you're given these huge budgets and uh, a, a, a great idea, because I think Hellboy is a great idea, but uh, well, when the, you just, the, you know, when you put it out there with like a really flimsy story, yes, I'm personally disappointed, and it's only the, because the, I'm thinking the thing it has potential. Is, is it's not, Hellboy 2 isn't a flimsy <laughs> story. You just, it's just not a heavy story. It's not story intensive. It's not flimsy. It doesn't fall apart. It actually makes sense. In fact, the one thing I liked about this film uh, the most is the fact that you understand that villain. That guy makes sense. Oh, no, that's a great villain. That's a great villain. And and it's one of those guys where when he's talking, you're not like, oh, this guy's insane. It's like, I don't know, guys. You kind of make it a little sense here. No, that, that's why in the review, I, uh, if you look at it, that, that is said that I think that he has a great villain in there. Uh, and I think that villain is the only really concrete character they have in there, the only dimensional character. Everybody else, as Leon said, everybody else talks in these one-liners, and that's what I mean by flimsy. And the, and Dude, it's when you a have comic a, book it, movie, and it's a, it's a comic book movie. I'm not going to use that excuse. I mean, we no, have no, a, no, no, no. Yeah. It's not an excuse. We, it we is got the a one... movie coming out next week, Bat, uh, The no, Dark Knight. Well, now, this is, this is something I wrote use about. that excuse. No, 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 no. It's not an excuse. What I love about the Hellboy movies is that they feel like a comic book. They have the kind of fun of a comic book. They, they're they light and airy like a good comic book is. The Dark Knight's coming out, but the, 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 the thing about the last Batman movie is as much as it's Batman, as much as it gets the soul of Batman, it's not at all like the Batman in the comics. It's a very different thing, but they get the soul right. But the thing is, is Hollywood has tried so hard for years to make superhero films fit in the real world as if the superhero could exist in this real world. And Guillermo del Toro is the one director that says, fuck that. I'm making a movie about the son of the devil who, you know, works for the government in this group of creepy crawlies that go off and kill other creepy crawlies. There ain't a lick of goddamn sense to be made. No, here. Don't make any sense. So I am going to make this as much fun as possible. And that's what he does. These, these films are that kind of a comic book movie. They exist in that four color oh, universe no, I, that I, doesn't I, have yeah. to make any goddamn sense, which is what I love about it. See, because for two hours I get to sit down and be just drenched in this world. And I, I feel like I'm in a moving comic. Book. I would say that, but again, just personally me as, a, like I say, a story guy and a, and a dialogue a person, I no, not a cynic. A cynic. <laughs> if I was a cynic, I would say that, Oh well, this is a comic book movie. Of course, it couldn't be good. No, that's no, being a cynic. No, 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 no. Hold on, no, 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 no. I do love comic books. I love I comic books. But I, but I look at something like Iron Man, which in itself is a ridiculous idea, <clears throughs> but the, the dialogue was at least at least good. I mean, in that movie, in the movie, it, it was great. I'm saying it, 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 the dialogue could have been a little bit better in Hellboy. 
I just don't want I all my characters talking in, in, in just one-liners. And, and especially when I think that there should be some emotion there. I mean, you got a guy who's out there. Everybody thinks that he's this freak and he doesn't know how to deal with everyone. And I think that, okay, if you got a character like that, I want to feel that, that, that isolation. And when he's going around popping off one-liners, yeah, it's fun to watch him explode stuff. It's fun to watch him fight stuff. It's fun to watch all these monsters. I had a fun time watching it. But did it meet, did, did, what, do I think it was a good movie because of, of that? No, I really think it should have been a little more emotional. That's, that's I don't think it had to be emotional at all. That's never been Hellboy. Hellboy is not an emotional and, comic. It's not an emotional story. And from story. what I understand, it, it, you know, if you get the right people, some people have told me that Hellboy, just like this movie, Hellboy is a cool comic to look at, but it's not that good of a comic. Well, it's not. No, there's not a lot going on. I mean, Leon said that the other day, uh, and, and it never. Ha- I was never a fan of the Hellboy comic. I and I was, you know, leery when I heard Guillermo was tackling Hellboy, but I was like, you know what? I, I've never been impressed by the comic, but you know what? I'm going to give him a shot because I love his stuff, and sure enough, I love the hell out of the film. Um, and he he departs from the he departs from the uh, comic book quite a bit. The comic book didn't have any romance at all. The yeah. whole story between Hellboy and Liz that doesn't exist in the comic book universe. That's something Guillermo added in because he felt he knew there had to be this kind of emotional hook for for Hellboy. See, as you talk, you're talking about that emotional hook, but that's not strong enough to carry that emotion. I I, I don't because I look I already know. I'm going to get jumped on by all these people saying, hell, boy, it was fucking great. What because the fuck is wrong with you? No, I'm not a cynic. You I'm guys, not, what, is guys, cynic, no, what is guys, cynical about me? Because I disagree with you? No. No. How no. am I, how am what, I cynical? What the fuck is that? Because I, I disagree. I, I, no, no. I, I'm actually positive, and that, makes, that doesn't make me a cynic. I'd see the potential in something be better. If I was cynical, I'd be you're, you're very sour it, about you're it. You're calling it stupid and saying it lacks emotion. It was dumb. You, characters you, you even know it was dumb. You, even, you, you described yourself as a big dumb. You said it's a big, dumb comic book movie. No, I never said dumb. Dumb was a word you added in. I said it's a big, loud fun comic book movie that it's not dumb it's not retarded okay well then i will go in and say it's dumb yes uh, and, and yes, the way you, you described will. it you actually summed it up by saying what can you do with this because the way you you had now speaking of cynical you had a very cynical tone behind you because you were like it's a movie about the son of the devil who's running around a bunch of creepy ca- crawlies who works for the government you had a very cynical tone behind that the way you described it the, the, the tone except of your voice that, that is I, like dumb except, no i i it's not cynical i i accept what it is and i love it for what it is Okay, being, well, not, <clears throat> like I said, cynical would be me looking at this and be like, oh, this is an atrocious movie they couldn't have done anything with. No, I'm thinking like it's a good concept and it's a good movie to watch. There could have been more there. That's yeah, not cynical at all. So well, you, I, you do whatever you need to do to convince yourself otherwise. I will. I would tell myself what I know mm-hmm. <laughs> and not listen to you telling me what I know. You go ahead. And you tell yourself that that's still like a, this great, smart movie when you know it's Are not. That- Oh, I'm, I'm just fucking up. with you now because I know because you call me cynical. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a taste. No, okay. So I'm looking at other stuff that's going on in headlines this week. Not, not a lot. Not, no, not a lot. I mean, if you just want to get into the, the, the typical stuff, I mean, uh, the, the, the Brandolina, whatever twins you want to call it. Oh. Uh, Knox and Leon. And look, you got all these people out there who are talking about, there's stories they're saying the first picture of these twins will will cost a fortune i'm like yeah if you really do who if you give a fuck about these two kids these two twins then you really need to search yourself you gotta, you get, the thing is is look people love gossip people love to feel oh, connected to other people and the, the thing is is these celebrities these uber celebrities become that unwitting friend that we all know and we can all talk about and give people who don't like to think about shit Something to think about and something to talk about that doesn't hurt themselves. And you, yeah. And the thing is, look, I don't care. These could be uh, these kids could be the second Jesus. They could be the children of God. If they look like a, a human infant, people always want they they want to say that infants are cute. Yeah, oh, how lovable are they? Oh, wow, that's so adorable. Infants look like shit. All right. You talk about Hellboy. They look like some shit that should be crawling around. They're like little trolls, all wrinkly and puffy looking. You see veins everywhere. So you're, you're sure you're not cynical? No. And right here I am when it comes to celebrities and all that kind of shit. Yeah, I'm cynical like here. When it comes to babies, fuck yeah, those exactly. babies, I'm man. Just, that, fuck those babies. As a matter of fact, I'm not even being cynical because they grow up to be cute. But I'm just saying when you first look at them, they're just little mushy things, man. And so if you want these pictures, these t- my point is, if you get pictures of these two celebrity twins, they're going to look like every fucking baby out there. Is this just, I, you, I, you put them up against any other infant, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. 
Wait, if you want to pay a, a fortune for their pictures, let them get like about two, three months old, even maybe a year old. Then you get some distinguishable features there. Don't get them when they look like little trolls and monsters, because that's what little infants look like. I look like that too. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be cynical Shit, about you this. You look like that now. Shit. Yeah. Exactly. Shit. I just look like one growing up. Some kids grow out of it. I don't grow out of it. I look like shit today. <laughs> so, Sitting but, here in your culottes. Exactly. Mm. But I, yeah, all this shit, man. I just, I'm just pulling myself out of See, this. When we're you be said you were going to talk this. about the news, I didn't even know. I didn't even know they were born. I took, I've taken the last four days off. I, I actually had it myself a vacation. Like I said, it's just a headline I read, man. I just, I browsed through it and uh, it's the same old no, shit. Let's, let's talk about the, the, I mean, we can mention the real news this week. There's not really anything to say, but hell yeah. But they finally signed Favreau. Oh yeah. For, for Iron Man too. Yeah. yeah I they knew finally, they, uh, the head of Marvel pulled his head out of his ass and said, yes, sir. We'll give you whatever you want. I'm really convinced that the head of Marvel, I mean, maybe he was screwing around John Favreau, but He's like, you know what? I'm just going to cause a little bit of news. I'm going to fuck with John no, Favreau I, a little I, bit. The, the, the people that I've talked with, it was, it was a legitimate thing, and it was something that shouldn't. It was, it was somebody trying to make a power play because he had done very well and wanted to you know, kind of throw his weight around, and, and the, he got stomped by the media because the, the wrong people stepped up and said, uh, you need to shut the fuck up and do what you're told. Why would you, why would you mess with somebody who made that fucking hit movie? And you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a disruption to bring somebody else in. That's the dumbest move I've ever because heard. Because he felt that, I, I, I'm guessing that he felt by playing chicken with Favreau that he could have gotten exactly what he wanted. Uh, and he didn't want to have to pay the money that he'd have to pay Favreau to do it. I, and, but there was a recon- there was you know there was obviously you know concessions made because they're keeping the 2010 date. Well, I mean that's good. I, I'm, all I'm saying is, is right after that, if John Favreau asked for a leprechaun in his contract, you better go out and find a fucking leprechaun somewhere Amen. because he did that well with that movie. I mean, yes, and really, it, and what I respect about John Favreau is that he actually w- took into consideration what the fans wanted in that movie, but didn't run and didn't run with it. Didn't take every bit of bit of advice. He's like, okay, I'm going to use a filter here. I'm going to yeah. see what works. I'm going to see what doesn't. I know what should be done here, but yeah, he there's also he people I got to cater to. Brett Ratner made when he made X-Men three. Uh, I don't even know what, I mean, what about putting a getting behind the camera <laughs> for making that movie, which no, I, I mean, even, well, yeah. I mean that he, he made a lot, he made a movie for the fans and he put things in there that actually angered fans like me to, to, to give a, you know, a big thumbs up to the internet fans, you know, I'm the juggernaut bitch. Yeah. See that kind of shit. You gotta, I, I yeah. Favreau didn't put any of that in. He put in what the, what, what the fans actually put want. in what made sense. I mean, like I said, you, you look like, I don't want to, and I don't want to disrespect the internet at all, but there, there's a balance out there you, that when snakes on a plane was made, I had a great time watching that movie at the theater, but the whole time that shit was leading up to the movie being made, they were talking about how they were listening to every little bit of advice of people on the internet. And I was like, man, that's a mistake. <laughs> because that, that's half of them. Are gonna, they didn't gonna actually push. listen to every bit of advice. What they, what they listened to is they realized, Oh my God, we made a PG 13 film with Sam Jackson and everybody out there. The, the tagline on everything talking about this movie is I want these motherfucking snakes off my motherfucking plane. And they're like, Holy shit. we, we didn't actually put that line's not in the movie. People are going to go to the movie to see that line, and that line isn't there. So they did reshoots that included, I want these motherfucking snakes oh, oh, yeah. on my motherfucking plane. But they and also went back and rating. reshot some things that just really stood out. I mean, as much as I thought it would have been funny to see the, 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 the nude sex scene in the bathroom and the snake attack, and I was looked at that and I was like, damn, that was put in there. That just stuck out like nothing, man. Well, I, they were like, yeah. look, we need to be, if we're going to make it rated R from the, the fucking fucking – then uh, we need the we need it to actually be rated R. So. Yeah, and that like I said, they they really uh, that's where I meant that they went too far. They're like, oh, we got to really go out our way to make this rated R movie yeah, and end up making a really bad. If you didn't see movie. that movie in a theater, there was no reason to fucking. Yeah, see you, it. Miss, you missed it. I mean, it I was actually, fun. I I ended up missing it that weekend and went and saw it with like six other friends. who are the only people <laughs> in the theater, so we all spread out so we could all heckle the movie together and have fun. Oh, it was a great time. 
Yeah, no, I had a great, a great time too. But I, when I came out, the, even the theater wasn't even that full when we saw. It, but we had a great time with the people that were in there, and I was like, "Wow, this movie's not going to do that good." My, you know what? My, my favorite thing of seeing that movie was I was there, and a friend of mine, Laura. Uh, there was one point where, like, thirty minutes in, she's uh, something happens, and she goes, "What? That doesn't make any fucking sense at all." And I just turn around, and I'm like. Because the last 30 minutes yeah. actually made a lick of sense. She's like, what? But dude, this is going too far. I can see that too. Even I was <laughs> that movie like. makes no goddamn sense. When, when uh, the kid from, uh, I, I can't remember the name, Keenan or Kel, uh, Kel, Kel Williams or something like that. The, the black kid that drove the plane at the end. Yeah. I, even Thompson. I said, yeah, I was like, man, come on now. <laughs> You're thinking Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which, no, no, which the fat black one. Yeah, Keenan Thompson. Okay, yeah, when he was driving the plane at the end, I was yeah. like, oh, Jesus, now come on. This is, you got to draw the line some goddamn way, okay? But uh, whatever. Anyway, I'm just saying be, there's, a, there's a balance on the internet with internet, internet feedback. You just, well, there's balance you, with feedback, period. Yeah, your, yeah. your fans, there are some people who were talking about they should have took some storylines for the Hulk movie that no one would have gotten. I'm, no. like, I'm like, what are you, crazy? You Be, wrote because, yes, they are. Yeah. you got to keep in mind that the Internet allows the normal idiots of America to have a voice, and these are people we never wanted to hear from. They were like, yeah, exactly. I had people actually people say to like me. People like us. Uh, see, no, I wanted I, to hear I, shit from us. I, here we are. But yeah, talking here. every goddamn week over beers. You got it, people. Here you didn't ask for it, but here we are like gangbusters. No, I had some people actually come to me and say, you know what I'd really like to see in the Hulk movie? I really hope they put it in where the Hulk goes to another planet and rules a legion of aliens. I'm like, are you at your fucking mind? Yeah. I'm like, what is wrong? Listen to what you said. I wish I had a tape recorder right now so you could just hear what you what you said. You said that, put that in What's funny movie. is you're, you're actually talking about the, the uh, planet Hulk storyline that Marvel had. See, I don't even know what's going on with that shit. All I know is I want to watch There's a Hulk whole storyline where they... Like World War Hulk and all that kind well, of no, stuff? Well, no, World War Hulk was... This was the lead up to that they the hulk had become such a menace that the they tricked the hulk to leave on a rocket ship and like threw him off into space and he ends up on this planet where he it's a he and he essentially becomes conan and it's the conan story where he becomes a gladiator yeah they go put that in the falls movie in love and has a family <laughs> and then so, that somebody kills his family and he goes berserk and leads a war and becomes the great hero of this planet as he oh. like leads a revolution then he comes back to earth and all pissed off that they did this to him and uh and so everybody in the world has to fight Hulk. oh yeah that, i heard they're doing this for the sequel <laughs> for the movie so <laughs> people just, wonder why we don't the take sequel. these comic books very seriously anymore. <laughs> you know what i gotta say though i'm a big comic book lover i'm a big comic book fan you know especially of comic book movies but man i'm glad that this is finally the last comic book movie of the summer i need a breather after six fucking you know, yeah, it's, it is too much. Row. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm the kind of guy. It's like I can always watch them, and it's like you know what? I have watched this will t- tomorrow will be the sixth superhero movie I've seen in less than two months, and it's just like wow. Yeah. No, is, I, I'm a big comic getting... book fan too. I mean, I might not go. I don't know what's happening as much because I just don't. I'm too busy to keep up with storylines. I don't. Buy, I buy a lot of stuff for art these days. I even like Mike McNola, guy who drew Hellboy. As much as I might Mignola. be talking about, it, yeah, I mean, as much as I'm talking about Mignola. that guy, I've been I've been like uh, looking at his work for years, man, and I and I admire the guy. And see, you know what? I've always disliked his art. Really? I, it works for Hellboy, and I know all my artist friends love his artwork. They're like, it's it's so brilliant, it's so genius. I always think back to when I was a kid and he was drawing Wolverine. And I hate it no, every time they had him onto a comic book because I hated the way the comic No, looked. that's a guy who has to draw his own stuff. Yes. And that's why I say, look, I never really read Hellboy. I bought like a – I actually have some books. But it's one of those things where he's better suited to drawing his own creations. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I, and I, think he's, I think that guy is, is an artistic genius myself, but that's only within his own realm. But uh, I think his character design is genius. Yeah, no, the guy's one, the guy's great. Uh, and another uh, headline here, uh, and this is something I do want to talk about because I, I really I can see where they slipped up here. Have you heard this thing about Bernie Mac? You know, I read about that, and it's I thought that was a really I mean it's I don't it's, let me yeah let me tell people what this is about. Uh, apparently, Bernie Mac there's a backlash against him performing uh, 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 a fundraiser for Barack Obama. And w- the reason why it happened, did you hear the joke that he told? I don't even know. I didn't even think I the didn't joke the was that bad. Uh, well, I, I heard the opening. I read the story that told the opening of the joke, and I didn't hear the end of it because they wouldn't tell you the end of it because it, it was so offensive that people heckled him from the. <laughs> yeah. It, 
I, it was this fundraiser. People paid twenty five hundred dollars to come to this thing uh, for a Barack Obama, and they got Bernie Mac to show up and do a little stand up. And the joke went like this. Now I, I was waiting for my jaw to drop, but it didn't. The joke went like, "Uncle, what's the difference between a hypothetical question and a realistic question?" And Bernie Mac says, "I said I don't know." But I said, go upstairs and ask your mother if she'd make love to the mailman for fifty thousand dollars. Okay, now hold on. That's the opening to the joke. Oh, that's the opening. That's the opener. That's not the punchline. That's the thing is, uh, if you read it, the joke continues from there. There's and it gets dirtier. And apparently, <laughs> it's no, 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 no. That's the opener to the joke. Okay, that's was... like that's like saying, okay, so three popes walk into a bar. Uh, okay, I'm glad and you the told first him. pope, he's he's wearing his funny hat, but the second two popes refuse to wear their hats. Okay, see, there's it's, nothing in here that says it's an opening. Cause I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, well, the only thing I can find, I, I can find offensive here is that it's not fucking funny, no, dude. <laughs> first of all, look, this is this is one of those things that happens. You always vet the people you have speaking at your political events. That's, that was going to be my point. The reason why they're doing this, the reason why everyone's asshole is clenching up is because right now McCain and Obama are tied in the polls, and the last thing Obama needs is another Reverend Wright. Exactly. And he doesn't need to be put together standing next to, to, the, the, to the other black man telling dirty jokes. At his, like, at his yeah, function. Because nobody's ever told a fucking dirty joke. What? Fuck off. Especially, especially a camp that's supposed to be so liberal. Fuck off, well, See, that's my Come point. On. Look, you know who you got, okay? Now, I blame both parties here because I'm saying, like, if you're doing a function like this, there are three places you don't do these kind of things where you actually get somebody who's appropriate. Get get Bill Cosby. Don't get no back. no. Don't get Bill Cosby. No. Look, you and I, we, you and I both love the cause, and we really <laughs> love the cause. But at this stage in his career, do we need to put Bill Cosby at a political I would event tell, in no. front of a microphone? You know what I would do? I can tell you, he's safe though. He's he's still loved by white people. Bernie Mac, you cannot. Bernie Mac, first of all, should have said, "I'm gonna be me." All right, don't don't ask me to do this, but don't. There are three functions you don't bring people to. You don't bring them to a political function. You don't bring them to a function where they talk to children, and you don't bring them to a, a religious function. Somebody like Bernie Mac. You know, the thing and, is, this story. There was one surprising, shocking fact in there that really did throw me for a loop. Bernie Mac is fifty. Bernie Mac, yeah, no, he's you didn't he's know that. 50? I thought he, I thought he was older. I thought he was younger. I didn't really? know he's 50. 50. But I mean, you, you got, what'd you think Brady Mac was going to do when you brought him there? I mean, the fuck I, I learned my lesson early on about doing these kind of things. I, if they had asked me to do this, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to fucking do it. Cause you want me to come up there and, you know just, what? You and be nice to these people. Dude, some of these people, some these people no, do politics what, for a living. Their experience with Bernie Mac was probably the Bernie Mac show. Well, that's the thing. And that's, and that's what they're looking at. But still though, they, again, a filter. If Bernie Mac is a fucking dirty comedian, my, and, and he's going to slip up. You can't bring him to these kind of this, things. And, and Well, I'm just going to say, it's just like somebody asked me to come to a function to speak to kids, and, I, and, what, and they got offended because I got up and I said, I didn't say don't fuck up. I didn't say don't fucking get anybody pregnant. I just said, you know what, kids? Don't do anything stupid, and you'll be just fine. Somebody took that offensively, and they thought. Who got you to come and speak to kids? Man, I've done this. I've, do, I've gone out and done drawings Who in front of kids. Who got you it, to speak in front who let you alone who let you in a room with kids for christ's here's, sake okay here's I what happens that was against your parole no here's what happens i i i do this thing every year or i've been doing it. i didn't do it this year where i go i, I draw with the kids now when i'm drawing with the kids in a small room it's fine because the kids are having a good time while drawing i'm having them i'm having fun i'm not in front of a microphone but they put me in front of a bunch of teenagers. They said, hey, you know, one teacher saw me and she's like, hey, you know, come on, come on out and speak to my, 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 uh, my, my middle school kids and come up and, and just oh, give them an inspirational man, that's speech. That's your dating pool. Exactly. I was, saying, I was looking at, I was sitting up there getting up on stage, like winking at certain girls. Said, no, I didn't do that. But I just got up and said, you know, kids. It's like the Indiana me. Jones girl up there. He said, well, I love you. <laughs> and I said, I don't have, I told him, I said, kids, I don't have a big motivational speech for you. I don't have any elaborate thing to tell you except just don't do anything stupid to mess your life up and you'll be fine. And that was my speech. They expected me to go on for another 15, 20 minutes to giving them some kind of graduation, graduation speech. I'm like, and then when they looked at it at the end, they were like, we're a little confused by what you said. I'm like, what the fuck did you want me to say? 
I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you want me to go up there and say? You want me to be? So, so you, what you're saying is it's their fault, not yours. Well, like I said, I didn't do anything too bad. They asked me to do it. I didn't, really didn't my, want to do it. My comment on the whole thing is it's really one of those stupid non-stories. It's, there, here are political writers and here are political people that have something to say. That, that their job is like us. You know, our job is to sit and talk about whatever news is there. And if there's not, find something to bullshit about. Yeah. Well, there's nothing going on right now that's exciting because we're still months out. And because this fucking campaign started so goddamn early, we're sick to death of it. I yeah. actually like both of the candidates. And they're getting to the point that I don't want to hear a word out of either of them because I'm starting not to like either of them anymore. Well, this is funny because I, I know what they want from these political functions. They want somebody to get up there and they want them because you even even if you are liberal, I know you said liberals, uh, they should be more open to this, but it's still a formal function. It's a, there's a bunch of white people there and they want they, they expect some sort of demeanor. That's that is what they do. Why are you saying it's a bunch of white people? Because it because it is. It, it was. I, I mean, they, Did you, it, were you there? I sure was. I was uh, wherever you're going to blame this on the, the it's the black no. guy that tells a dirty joke, but it's the white people's fault. Let me tell you something. And it's going to seem racist. <laughs> Go ahead, on tell my, me this, something. This, tell this me is going to seem, this is going to seem racist on my part against black people, but this shit costs $2,500 a plate to be there. How many black people do you think were there? <laughs> I mean, damn, come on. And I'm not even saying, look, let's just, I'm just, I'm saying the race thing is a joke here. $2,500 I mean, a plate. You out your goddamn mind. Shit, black people be in there and be like, there be be better be a goddamn buffet in here. I better be able to go back and get as much as I want. Because that's how I would be like, shit, fuck the man. I'd dance with that shit. <laughs> exactly. Well, that would be the fattest ass I ever see. Where the hoes at? <laughs> wow. I, wow. I, who are those people outside ready to tar and feather us? I, I, I know. No, I know. We're joking. I'm just I'm saying the racing is being funny. But in these kind of function, it, there, is a, uh, there is this era. Of we, you need to be appropriate for this. And they expect you to, like, cross this, not to cross certain lines. And that's what happened here. You just got the wrong guy for well, it. Well, the thing is, is and, and uh, man, if, if you read Obama's response, it's such a, it's such a lame response. He, like, admonishes. Uh, Bernie Mac to try to smooth it over. And then he says, I'm "I'm just just messing with you, man. (laughs) It's like, wait, 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 this, we can't, this is the guy we're supposed to vote for president who can't even condemn someone without going, I'm just messing with you, man. What did you make up your mind, dude? Well, I mean, you know, Barack Obama is going to win this shit. And I'll tell you why, because he's a celebrity. I mean, and this, this goes into entertainment because he is a celebrity. I that and that's what it takes. To, unfortunately, I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing to this. I mean, I'm everybody knows. It's no surprise. I hope he wins. Just, I, just so I, they can shake shit up a little bit. Hey, I'm fine with him. I, I want another white guy for president. Oh, come on, half white. <laughs> hey, you know what? Half white, still yeah. white, my man. Everybody keeps no. talking about him like he's gonna be the first black president. He's gonna be the the first half black exactly president. he's let's, gonna be the tiger be woods the of, of the president white exactly that's why people feel comfortable and that's okay let's you know ease a guy, guy in and, and how know? can a guy really be black if he's got a white mama that, that's what i'm saying because, no but, no it's it, here's how it works i mean it doesn't matter which parent is white or black if you look about the color of a, of a paper bag then you black when you come out it doesn't matter that's why everybody called well, tiger woods shit, it, if you have a tan people consider you black yeah, you know, well, it depends on. I mean, it. I, look, I, I'm not. I, and a lot of people expect me when they say, "Oh, you're voting for Barack Obama because he's black." I'm like, "Is there something wrong with that?" Yeah, it's the same reason why I would vote for Hillary Clinton because she's a woman. Because I think people deserve a fair chance after all these years in a fair country, a supposedly fair country. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just, you know, I'm Shit. one of those crazy motherfuckers who wants to vote for a guy based upon the fact that I like his ideals. Well, if he was not the right, if I felt like he wasn't the right guy, I wouldn't vote for him because he was black. Just like I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton because he was because she was a. a a woman i would vote i would i want to vote for somebody who's qualified but if there's a benefit for them breaking the mold then yeah shit if Vern troyer the midget went up there and said i'm qualified to be president and he was i'd probably vote for him I'd be like hell yeah i'd vote for you yeah but if you read that story about him and his girlfriend and how he almost drowned in the bathtub you definitely wouldn't want him no nah, he's too late now no nah, he's, he's tarnished that shit we nah, tried that's... to have sex in the tub and he almost drowned <laughs> oh my god yeah, could there be any more embarrassed i mean it, she couldn't have embarrassed him more had she talked about him having a tiny Tiny wee wee and uh, Damn. and being lousy in bed. No, we tried to shake things up in bed <laughs> and we did it in the tub and he almost drowned. She just fucked his chances up for president. That's no my criteria. President. If you can't fuck in the bathtub, then you cannot be president. That's just that is that's it right there. All right, kids, there you go. Your <laughs> message this week from Morgan. No wonder they had problems with you speaking to kids. Jesus fucking Christ, kids. Dude. All I can tell you is fuck in the bathtub and don't drown. If you can do that. 
You'll all be your fine. problems in life are so. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> don't do anything other than that. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I, I, I really think you're right. That is a non-story. I just don't understand how anybody couldn't see that this wasn't a perfect fit. But because anyway. there was there, there was no other political news this yeah, weekend. There exactly. was nothing. This this kind of thing happens all the time. Uh, it's just, you know, you look at what happened with McCain six months ago when he went to a, a rally and you had that guy that all he did is kept referring to Barack Hussein Obama, Barack Hussein Obama. And, yeah. and people threw a fit because how dare you use his middle name? You're using his middle name against him. You're trying yeah. to incite it against who's, you know, liken him to Saddam Hussein. And, you know, uh, mm-hmm. McCain had to come out and go. Yeah, uh, that wasn't cool, dude. Stop it. Yeah, exactly. I, and, and, and look, I, but but I was, Hussein for president, I guess, is what you're going for. Hey, if he's qualified, should I vote for the, uh, the real Hussein if he was alive and was qualified? But to I thought we him. weren't talking about politics. You, hey, I'm just, I'm not talking about politics. You see, you just gave I'm, the whole speech. I'm talking why about you're voting for Barack I, Obama. I'm talking about a celebrity. That's a, this is entertainment news. They're here. both celebrities. <laughs> I, so, hey, uh, John uh, McCain was in a movie, motherfucker. Where, where's Barack Obama's movie? Oh, it's coming. I'm gonna play Barack Obama in that movie. <laughs> and, and you know what? John McCain was in a hit movie. What movie was he in? Oh, he, uh, you don't remember? No. He, he made an appearance in um, uh, Wedding Crashers. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he had God. This is one of those things that people forgot. This Damn, is, you make this it sound is, like it was the the the, the McCain movie, like McCain. No, 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 the no, movie. no. He just showed up in the movie because one of the weddings was a big political wedding, and uh, that they were at, and John McCain was in it, and there was a whole big to do in the conservative angle because they were all like, he appeared in a movie that had foul language and 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 nudity. And and how dare he disgrace the uh, oh. the office of the senator? And his Jesus response was one of the Christ. best responses ever. He's like, "Are you kidding? Really? That's your problem? Because I work in Congress. I work with boobs every day." <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, "Oh, that's why I love this guy. Like, that's you, awesome." You gotta make a joke to get out of shit. And and it worked because everybody shut the fuck up after that because they would have to play his response, and his response was too good. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Well, anyway, first of all, I can't wait for Batman tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm dying. You know what? I I wish I were that excited. Uh, I'm not, but mostly because every day for the last six months, I get an email going. So how excited are you for Batman? Is it going to be awesome? Is it going to be awesome? It's. It, I feel like somebody's dog. You know, and he's like, "Who's a good boy? Who's a good? How good is Batman going to be? How good is it going to be?" And it's like. Ah. At this point, I'm like, I just want it to be fucking good. I, you know, I want to enjoy it. Just people like, are excited, man. I, I'm people excited too. You know, I excited. love. I, but I've been a big Christopher Nolan fan for a long time. No, so have I. I mean, I think the guy, uh, the, the guy is just the guy, he has integrity. Yeah, in every filmmaking. and the thing is, is everybody keeps asking me, and I'll tell you right now why I haven't written about it. People are like, what, what, did you see the first six minutes? Did you see this new trailer? Did you see that? I have not watched shit. The only thing I've seen is the trailer that played in front of uh, uh, of uh, I Am Legend when I went and saw that. The old, the, the first big trailer they put out. Why is that the only one I've seen? Because my ass is already in the seat. I don't need to see a single frame of this film until it's complete and in the form of the story. I don't want a single second of this movie ruined for me yeah, because and- I, uh, I want to go in and watch it and just see this movie. Because... I trust Christopher Nolan. I trust Christian Bale. I trust everyone in this film, and I cannot wait for that experience to be great. But I've just – it's been – there's been too much hype on this, and, and anytime there's this much hype, I have well, to step back. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of hype. I mean, there's a lot of hype about Iron Man, too. There's, a lot, a, lot, there's a lot of hype about every movie. You're but excited is, about this, but I remember but, you walking out of the last Batman going, eh. No, I didn't. No, you got that wrong. I, no, I, thought, I remember. I, no, 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 no. I thought that I said I thought this is a great movie. I said the only thing I thought about it that was a flaw was at the end of it. They had a typical climax, but I said, and you, you were totally wrong about that because I said this is at that time. I said this is the best uh, interpretation of a character of a comic book character I've ever seen. <clears throat> and the thing I loved about it was that they approached it with the air of seriousness and respect that they should have. And that's exactly what I said about that movie. At I love that movie. You weren't in love with it. I, I mean, you may have come to grow and no, grow no, 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 no. It. I remember when you walked out of the theater, you had that same look because it was around the same time we'd seen Land of the Dead, and you you had that same kind um, of man. I didn't I'm here to, to tell that. you that you are absolutely wrong. Uh, absolutely you, wrong. yeah, you are remember. wrong. I'm I'm here to tell you not only you're wrong, but you you're full of shit. Is that why you're here? You're here to <laughs> yeah, tell me that. Yeah, I'm here to tell you that you were wrong about that. You were absolutely, positively wrong. 
I just said, I didn't, hey, look, I didn't think the movie was great all the way through, but was it a brilliant film? I thought, yeah, I thought this was one of the greatest comic book movies ever made. And not only did I say it was a good comic book movie, but I was like, wow, that is just a good movie overall. I thought, I thought it was great. I mean, I, like I said, I did have problems at the end. I was like, at the end, they copped out. And I had problems with Katie Holmes, hey, like everybody else. how could you have a problem with Katie Holmes? As erect as her nipples are at the end of that fucking film, those were stars under themselves. Those marbles. Maybe she was topless, yeah. But I... I Dude, she know. didn't need to be topless. They, <laughs> th- those nipples were like six inches out of that sweater. It's funny because Katie Holmes is not a bad actor. She just got hooked up with somebody who was crazy and she's been the tabloids too much. And I looked at her in the movie, I was like, she's not that bad in this movie. She's just got too much negative pu- pu- publicity around her, which is too bad. But they got Maggie Gyllenhaal in this movie, and I'm thinking that was the smartest thing they could have done. So. Well, we'll see. Uh, you'll, you, I mean, you're thinking that, but we haven't seen the movie yet, so... Ah, uh, but like I said, I can sit up here and think that, wow, I mean, that's good casting. I, I, I'm, automatically, I'm saying... With the caliber of actors they have in a movie, that's good. That is good casting. I think now, the movie's going to be huge, man. I, just, I know you and I have talked about this. I think the movie's going to probably be. It, it, look, I could be wrong, and I'll tell you that all the time. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, but there's a lot of great word of mouth coming for it. The, there the, is. The buildup for it is incredible right now. I think this will probably be the movie of the summer. The only thing I think would like make it not is that the, is the running time is like two and a half hours. Well, good. I love a good two and a half hour movie, and that that is never harmed a film. People say, oh, if the running time's too long, we can't make as much money. It's like, yeah, Lord of the Rings. Explain Lord of the fucking Rings. The last movie was three and a half hours in the theater. Oh, it, my God. It's, it depends on whether or not that, that last half hour is any good. And that's what I'm saying, because the only complaint that I've heard from people is saying it doesn't really ruin the movie, but it's unnecessary. Uh, that's that's what I've heard people say about well, that. Well, we'll see. You yeah. know what? I, I really want this to be good. I do. I'm just... I think they've overhyped it. I think we've we've heard too much, and I've got way too many people constantly asking me how excited I am. And it's like once once that happens, it's you, you you hit a wall, especially when you've done this for a long time, because there's a point where you get so excited that there's no way the movie can live up to. Well, it. I don't get excited about anything. I mean, I'm excited to see the movie because I already think it's going to be at least a decent film. I mean, I don't think it's going to be bad, so I'm already going in there knowing that I'm in for something that's that that's well made. I go into everything with no expectations. I mean, that's just how I go these days. And people ask me over and over the same question to the point where I'm like, well, this is a person who doesn't know me. All right. I'm the used thing, to it. The thing about this is I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping beyond hope that this is not a summer film because what, what this movie looks like to me, I don't, I mean, it may be released in the summer, but that was what was great about the last one was it was not, nobody would call it a summer film. Because it, it was not a laid back, fun, poofy, you know, mm-hmm. explosion fest. It was it was a heavy film, and it was really fucking. I well, want. This I heard to there's be- a balance here. I heard that it's not only a good uh, summer movie, not only a good superhero movie, but it's a good movie. Now you're right. I haven't seen the movie, so. I'm not riding off with what I hear here. I mean, the, all these people could just be going in with the hype, even though they say they're not buying into it. And they could be just totally in, uh, just in, uh, seduced by that. And they go in wanting a good movie, and that's what they got. I'm going to go in thinking like just anything else. Just like with Batman Begins, like I walked out, and I was, I'm telling you what I honestly thought. I thought it was a great movie, but that last part, that climax was disappointing to me. So, but this, it might be well, the same I just, here. I, and what I'm <laughs> speaking to is just I remember you walking out of the film kind of shaking your head going, man, I, I, I see what you're talking about, but I just didn't love it like that. But that's just what I remember. It was probably what uh, going against what Cyrus said, because Cyrus came out just loving the movie. And we did oh, have he, a, he practically jerked off on the fucking front of the and him the, and I had did have a conversation. He yeah. was just he was standing by the poster, giving it that loving <laughs> stare, and, and he was just pounding away at that 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 thing, and it was just like, oh my god, because him and wow. I had a conversation where it, it, he said that's a perfect movie, and I had this whole thing of saying. No, I don't think it was. I do. I see, think that, it's great. The, you, no, this is exactly what I'm remembering. Okay, yeah, see, that's no, what no, you no, heard. You, you gave. You were shaking your head, going, "No, I do not think it was a perfect movie." And so, and and when you get in an argument like that, you you don't just try to play shades of gray. Or at least back, you gotten better about it. But at, back at the time, you, if somebody said, uh, you were like, you know, that movie was pretty damn good. No, that movie was awesome. What the fuck are you talking about? It's a piece of shit. It's a piece of shit. Fuck you. Well, at fuck the you. Time, the movie was awful. I didn't have it. No, I didn't have that conversation with him at yeah, the time. No, no, I remember no, but you were. No, because he said he was. In fact, it was more heated on his part because he was like, you can't tell me that this movie isn't better than some other movie that was getting praised at the time. I was like, no, I can tell you because 
it's all about opinion. I mean, I don't even think it's better than the movie you're talking about. But if somebody says so, how can you argue that? I mean, you have your opinion about it, and I got, and that person has their opinion about it. You can't yep. say one is right or the other. <laughs> I mean, it's just not. That's not an argument. Now, I do love the last one, and I do own it on DVD. I love the, you know, I love the shit out of it. I want this, and I think this might even be the better film, and I hope so. But I just, I think it's, I think the problem, it's got too much hype right now, and I'm, I'm really hoping that it can live up to it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, and it's, it was going to have that ever since Heath Ledger died. But I tell you what's really got me excited is, I mean, it's, I'm not, not excited, but what's making me think is just going to be just a massive hit. I mean, it's, it was even before Heath Ledger died, people were looking at those pictures of the, of the Joker. First ones came out, they were like, we don't know. It was that picture where he's up close to the screen. They're like, I don't, I don't know about that. It looks weird. But when they finally saw him, they were thinking, wow, this is pretty incredible. And, and at least appearance wise. And then when they actually saw trailers of him, people were like, this is the Joker everybody's been looking for. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I have a feeling, man. But hey, you never know. We'll see. You we never know. See. I don't claim to have a pulse on all this movie stuff. I just take guesses like anybody else. Uh, here's some email. Uh, this comes from this comes from Miriam from Australia. She says, "Let me just start by saying thank you for a brilliant show." Now it's funny how people have called this a show now. Like it's not it's not a website anymore. Some people some people actually call this a, a show, like a, like a program on TV or something. But she says, "Thanks for the uh, brilliant show and all your hard work. It provides so much entertainment for me, almost too much." So here's a question for you. I'm what glad you, we got to a question because I you know you, I hate these emails. I know. I, 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 I can't help you there. Uh, what do you think that this, about this whole thing of diva singers shifting into an acting career? Uh, it seems to happen so much these days. Do you think it's an effective way to, to plug a, a movie to the public so that it, 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 it enhances your career? And, oh, let me see. I'm, here. I'm, I'm far away from the screen here. Uh, on that note, it is... Likely that I may, I'm not going to read that. Anyway, it says, love from Australia, Miriam, thanks very much. And <laughs> we get a lot of questions from people who say, <clears throat> what do you think, do you think movies were better back in the day in the 50s and whatnot? Do you think they were better at a better time? What do you think about this trend that's happening right now with people? And you, you don't understand that these trends have always been there and these good movies have always been there too. This whole thing of divas and singers uh, expanding their career into uh, into movies is nothing new at all. I, I just made a list real quick right before I even got that email, which is just a little bit before you got here. And if you look throughout time, you got people like Julie Garland, Peggy Lee, Doris Day, Diana Ross, Dolly Parton, Bette Midler, Whitney Houston, Barbara Streisand, even Madonna. Some people have made the, the, the crossover better than others, but you, these are all people who are singers. In other words, it's nothing new for singers, whether it be men or women, adults or children to make that transition to movies. If they're popular and they're bankable, a studio is going to grab them up at some point, maybe, and try to, and try to make that transition for them. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, yeah, it's nothing I, it's, new. It's, you know, yeah, there have been several that did it, but I mean, uh, the, the ones that really stick out, Madonna, who kept trying to do it, they never worked <laughs> out. Uh, and then you look at, I mean, you left off uh, one of the, the greatest from the list, um, Bette Midler. No, I did. I said Bette Midler. Oh, did you? I, mm -hmm. I didn't hear that in the list. I no, came Bette, after Dolly Parton. Yeah, Bette Midler is uh, probably and and Dolly Parton doesn't count because she was in like what? What was she? Old? She she did. Did she two. do a second movie? Yeah. Do, do oh, you that's remember right. Rhinestone? Talk. Well, maybe three. She did. Do you remember Rhinestone? She was in Rhinestone. And Rhinestone's a horrible movie, yeah, but she but tried. She did two, and then later on, she was in Straight Talk. Which okay. is that movie from the '90s? But I'm just saying the 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 attempt was there. Like I said, some people have sure, done it but, better than others. But no, I mean, of course, I mean, and and it really is. It's one of those things that you kind of have to try that if you can, because the music business is one of the most fickle businesses in the world. Think about the number of people who really truly last after a second album. <laughs> uh, I mean, and people who are fantastic, people who are incredibly talented, but just you know, after the second album, nobody cares. And you will go, no matter how talented you are, you can go away. But when it comes to a movie career, you can always keep working because they will, people will put you in a movie just because of your name. Yeah. And if you're really talented, you can make the transition into directing. Barbara Streisand has, yeah. has directed a couple of successful yeah, movies. she has. So, I mean, if you're talented in a multiple, uh, multiple areas, then you got a better chance of, as you say, keeping your career going. 
But yeah, no, look, there's all these trends that you're going to ask us a lot of questions. Uh, w- this happened a long time ago in movies, remakes, blah, 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 blah actors who sang making a transition. Uh, all this stuff probably has been done before at some sure, point. But, but our job is to remind people of that. Oh, yeah. Our mm-hmm. job is to go back through history and say, look, this is not new. This is just a thing that's come back around again. Because and back I have in, no the, problem with in that. the 80s and 90s, it was taboo. Like when Madonna did it, she was razzed about it. Because she wasn't that good. And and you you were allowed to either well it's not just that but you were either a musician or you were an actor you were not allowed to do both remember how much shit we gave to Marky Mark when he made his first movie and then he turned out to be really good I I don't know if I gave that much shit to him because I've always thought that it's not a surprising thing I mean I, when Marky Mark did it I went back and thought of the epitome of that which is probably Frank well, Frank Sinatra I mean, we, you know, we had, yeah. well, but then, you know, at the same time we had Marky Mark and Will Smith. It's like, what's up with all these rappers? Becoming That's actors? what it was. It was rappers that were people and it still and, kind and, of gets under people's skin. And then it turns out, Oh wow. Look, they turned out to be two of our great, the greatest actors of their generation. Oh wow. That was, that was pretty cool. No, I have no, I have no problem with rappers. Rappers have, have made their names as performers already to go in and the ones act. I don't like are the you know the ones that get one album that's big on the rap charts and then they go and do direct to video crap <laughs> you know something like that's a caps that's a good a segue Z. to this one last email I'm gonna read give me that last email because this 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 is a funny give it to me email. motherfucker before I have to write a rhyme <laughs> about it because I can out rhyme you anytime motherfucker that was a rhyme but it was internal rhyme you were so terrible at this this you know when I see it, I don't want to bring Razor to it, but when they say that that right the white dude that can't rap that tries, you were that guy. You were no Marky I Mark. Never actually try, and you should not ever try again. No, no. Why would I try? <laughs> you just did, and it, it put a hurt on my eardrums. I, that's okay. I'm a black girl can't rap, so. Uh, but this is a this is a funny email that, that made me laugh here because of some of the titles this guy was throwing out. It says. uh my grandpa is not good at renting movies. He'll always grab the worst straight to DVD shit. As long as it looks like it's an action movie. And as long as it has Spanish subtitles, you sound just like so many of my friends, dads. I, I can't even tell you, man, but he says, uh, like, this is, <laughs> this is funny. What he's saying. He's like the other day he rented a movie called 45 caliber. Then he comes home with another movie called ghetto dogs. <laughs> then there's another time he came home with a movie called full clip. And what's worse is that is the fact that he ended up hating all the movies that he's rented. So I'm wondering, how can I convince him to not rent a movie? And do you guys have any recommendations on some really good blow up shit? Fuck the plot action movies. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I think your granddad is bringing enough of them home. I, maybe you should like trust his decisions a little bit more. <laughs> but I let me just tell you something. If your grandfather brought home ghetto dogs, I would want him to call me so I could come up and watch this shit. Cause that sounds like a, unless it's some Disney shit that I'm missing. Disney presents ghetto dogs. No, I, I didn't do ghetto, ghetto dogs. is not good. Have you seen this? I've seen, ghetto you've dogs. seen ghetto dogs. I've seen ghetto dogs. Now is it, is it actually, is it like a uh, Hollywood chihuahua? Is it some dogs in the ghetto talking? No, it's dogs. D a W G S. Oh, see, he spelled it dogs. D O G S here. No, no, it's oh, D a W G S. It's ghetto dogs, boy. Oh, shit. you better, you better represent. I actually know a guy who was in that movie. I had to send him an email and go, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I owed the favor, the director a favor. So ghetto dogs, man. What is this about? I mean, it sounds like I'm straight to DVD. You know what? It, no, no, it is straight to DVD. Shit. I saw this when it came out years ago. And it's, I barely, it's one of those things I barely remember where I was watching it going, oh God, dude. No, this was like five, six years ago, easily. It's it's not something that I'd remember much of. There's, there's direct-to-video movies I watched last week that I barely remember. Yeah, I it, 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 ghetto dogs is not good. I can tell you that much. You know something? Here's what I would recommend that you watch. You want to watch a movie with some cool action, a very thin plot, but just exciting to watch. Go rent the original Assault on Precinct Thirteen. I would wholly disagree with you on that. Why is that? I you know what? I dig that movie. It doesn't hold up. I uh, just watched I that dig- movie not too long ago, and I love that movie. I like the remake. I think uh, the remake is pretty fucking good. So here's where you and I disagree. I thought that remake was terrible. I dug that remake. I dug the shit out of it. The 
the original, it's good. It's a good classic film, but you love it from the sense of a shitty 70s cinema. No, I love it from the sense that this movie was made on a low budget and it's pretty yeah, well made. And I thought, but, like, and not only that, it's a good action movie. I, I think that movie's very good. Dude, I, I love Carpenter, and I love that movie, but it's one of those movies that I showed to a bunch of people a few years ago out of my love, and it was it didn't hold up. No, there's certain things in there. Where the, the John Carpenter even tells you, like, I couldn't afford to stop the camera right here because we had nothing to fill in this part. But I don't know, man. I I think it's a brilliant film. I, I not, I'm not only saying that from some nostalgic sense. I'm not even saying it because it's a. I think it's a bad movie that you can make fun of. I actually think it's a really cool movie. You know, the the, the movie that you know ripped that one off to a certain extent uh, that I really enjoy uh, that I can recommend is a French film. French film called Nid de Gweps. Uh, it literally translates to Nest of Hornets, but it was released here in the States under The Nest. And it's this cool flick. It's about, uh, uh, there are like two stories going on that collide. One is a story about a bunch of thieves who are robbing a, uh, 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 a warehouse in the middle of the night. And the other story is about this super cop who is transporting uh, Europe's most villainous, just evil motherfucker. Um, uh, from one prison to another and his gang shows up and kills all the cops, just takes them out. And this super cop drives the, you know, the van with the, with the, the prisoner in it, into this warehouse. And all of a sudden these criminals who are trying to rip off this warehouse are stuck in this warehouse with a couple security guards and a super cop while all these masked thugs are raiding, trying to kill them all to, to free their their lord, you know their crime lord, and it is a bad. I was about to say that sounds just like Assault on Precinct Thirteen, but it sounds like it's cool. I'm no, no, no. Like I said, it rips it off. But what they did with it is just incredible. It's this great film. It's called The Nest. I highly recommend. But that. of course, the, the Assault on Precinct Thirteen ripped off uh, not, not Rio Bravo, R- Rio Bravo, and Night of the Living Dead. Well, yeah, but but as John Carpenter himself said, was I just keep remaking Rio Bravo over and over again. Another one, if you haven't seen Boondock Saints yet, you have to see Boondock Saints. That's a great one. Um, going with the mainstream stuff, highly recommend uh, Bad Boys 2. That's one of those just really no, bad. Yeah, I was trying shows. to think of shit that, he, that this guy might not have seen because uh, Bad Boys 2 was out there. And I, and I like Bad Boys 2. That's a, no, that's a, that's a really – but you got to recommend it because it's just – look, maybe he hasn't seen it. Maybe he thought, oh, I heard that was Michael Bay and it's stupid. No, that movie's fucking awesome. No, and, and again, it's one of those dumb movies just full of action and it's pretty cool. I mean, if you, can just, if you just want action, that movie has no brain at all. Yeah, no, it's uh, – but uh, The Nest is great. Uh, I, I, this guy sent me an email too. I was going to actually answer it and ask – Carlisle, because uh, there were a bunch of movies that came to mind, but now that I'm three beers in an hour and a, <laughs> a couple of cold ones in, I'm uh, I'm like, God, what were those movies that I was going to recommend to him? I mean, but, I, I don't know. You could recommend anything from Hong Kong. I mean, there's, there's still shit in Hong Kong that well, you, if you want. Yeah, you want to yeah. talk about Hong Kong. First of all, you need to see The Killer. You need to see Hard Boiled. You need to see A Better yeah. Tomorrow and A Better yeah. Tomorrow 2. All those, those are John all Woo awesome movies. films by John Woo. Yeah. Um, Time and Tide by uh, Choi Hawk. Uh, is a great one. Um, uh, God, uh, if I want to, you know, if I was, if I'm going to recommend something that you talk about is like brainless, but it's actually creative in a brainless kind of way. And we're going to talk about stuff that's probably, that's probably well known right now, but maybe by not some people talk about, uh, uh, something like, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Well, Kung Fu Hustle is, is a lot of fun. That's, uh, your son. Shaolin soccer. Now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in Shaolin Soccer, King of Beggars, one of his early films I've, is fantastic. Yeah, I've actually seen that, yeah. Holy crap, is that a good movie. One Armed Swordsman's a great movie. Uh, uh, God of, of Cookery, is that? God of Cookery, Cookery God yeah. of Gambling yeah. with Chow Yun Fat. I was just watching a scene from that the other oh, day. Oh, yeah? It was at the game store, and someone was showing the final sequence to, uh, to uh, God, of Gambling, God of Gamblers. And, uh, oh, God, that's a good film. Um, um, yeah, no, there's a lot of good shit out there. I mean, I mean, it's, this, this is one of those categories where it's, it, it's kind of hard because you don't, I mean, it's, uh, some, somebody might be able to be more immersed in this and tell you some stuff other than us, because I know co-host 3000 is, is great at that. Just finding these movies that no one has seen and just recommending them. And they just, they're, they're these action films that kind of blow me away. And I'm like, where'd you get this? Um, but I'm, you know, I'm telling you stuff that's kind of well known. If I had actually prepared for this, I probably could tell you some more stuff. I mean, ask me about some underground films or black exploitation or animation. But when it comes to action, I'm going to tell you, I'm not I, right off the top of my head. I can't really just blurt out stuff. 
Yeah, see, I'm a, I'm a big action. Okay. Now, for those of you who are hardcore, I'm talking about hardcore guys, I'm going to recommend something to you. Um, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. No, 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 no. <laughs> the name just eluded me. Um, God, okay, I'm going to give you guys a quest because now the name is gone. I have this at home, and I'm trying to think of the American translation of the name. But it's from the director uh, who did uh, Ong Bak. Ong ba- I knew you were going to say Ong Bak. And then followed it up. You know, After that, he did The Protector. In between that, he did an, this awesome film, which really showed who he wanted to be. He wants to be Thailand's Michael Bay. And, this and The film, Protector was the one where he's protecting the elephant, right? Yes. <laughs> this one does not have... Um, God, now I'm blanking on it. And name. I'm the guy who, the, the, the little guy who was in those movies. Yeah. Guy. Yeah, well, he is a little guy, he, but he kicks ass. <laughs> yeah, He's an amazing little guy. Yeah. I can't remember his um, name either. God, it's, the, damn these beers. Damn you asking me this question. Again. <laughs> um, I'm going to go home and I've got, I've literally got it on DVD. I found the DVD at a store that was going out of business. And God, I love this film. It's the film in between their same director. This guy wants to be Michael Bay really bad. And the film is this incredibly patriotic film about the, the nation's Olympic team who uh, um, they're going out and giving away all these presents, these blankets and food and toys to people in this poor village out in the middle of Thailand. If somebody doesn't want that. No, 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 no. At the same moment that they're out there, terrorists show up with a missile. And they take over the town, and they're going to launch a missile from this town and blow up uh, the the, the biggest city in Thailand, which I think has 12 people in it. Um, (laughs) Our fans in Thailand are pissed at me now. (laughs) Damn you, Carlisle! Um, (laughs) No, um, God, why can't I not think of the name of this movie? You guys will be able to find it on IMDb. Anyhow. The point is, these terrorists show up, and they kick the crap out of everyone. They murder half the town, and they are just these brutal assholes. And all these people, these these uh, uh, these uh, uh, Taiwanese uh, or not Taiwanese Thailand uh, 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 Olympic stars and people living in this town all realize they're all going to die. They're not going to survive this. So if we're going to die, we're going to die for Thailand. So they they just take up arms and start fighting. They don't even take up arms. They just start fighting. And so you've got like a guy who plays soccer for a living who's knocking these fruit off of trees into people. You've got an eight-year-old girl who's a martial artist kicking the crap out of terrorists. You have people using gymnastics in ways you've never seen before to beat up terrorists. This sounds insane. And and the next, and it's a 45 minute action sequence. They build up to this and it is 45 minutes of nonstop action as these people try to take this town back. By the time the movie's over, like 12 people get on a truck to get out. I mean, so many people die in this fucking movie. It's unreal. Damn. It's so fucking good. And I hate the fact that I cannot remember the name. It is just insane. And you'll see the trailer online. The trailer is like the greatest trailer to a movie you've ever seen in your life. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to go home, find this. So by the time this is up and everyone's listening to a couple of cold ones, I will have up <laughs> a little a post. Of, I will try to find this trailer. This is the greatest trailer ever made. You'll watch this trailer and go, oh my god, this movie's so awesome. And while the movie doesn't quite live up to the trailer, it's still fucking pretty goddamn awesome. Well, the shit, that's good. No movie should, no, no, oh, we, oh, the movie doesn't live up to the trailer. Not, well, the... no, because when you watch the trailer, what you'll see it, because I'll post it up and you'll no doubt find it. It's like one of those greatest trailers. You're going to be, oh my god, this shit's off the hook, and it is off the hook. But I they think I've heard of this, man. Two yeah. I, I, somebody, I, I probably told you about this years ago. You are uh, uh, some some of these people we see at the theater told me about. It. I haven't seen it, but I've god, heard I of this before. I cannot think of the name of this fucking movie. But I, I remember at the time saying it. it was somebody that's no, it's a bar person because there's a little Asian video place. I mean, it's like, it's almost like when you walk in there, it's like gremlins. There's a guy in there like, hey, how are y'all? How are y'all? I think he's, I'm expecting Gizmo to be in the background or something. But, uh, you know, it's a woman actually runs this place. Kim's Video, I think is what it's called. Something like that. And they were saying you can get that movie <laughs> over there. Kim is her last name, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. It's <laughs> Hong Kim. It's, it's a, it must be a woman. It's Kim's Video. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it is called Kim's Video, but the place is run by a woman. And uh, the, 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 there's a little woman there, and she gets all these movies, and they were telling me about this movie and saying, go get it over there. No, it's, uh, the, the movie's fucking awesome. Yeah. No, it's, I, it's I don't really, want to see really, it. really fucking good. But it's, cool. it's, it's a Michael, it's a Thailand Michael Bay Thai- movie. Damn. It's, it is not a smart film, but man, is it patriotic. There's plenty of slow-mo action scenes, and there's some badass Yeah, that's Michael Bay. Like, this world needs another Michael Bay. 
I'm no, I know you love Michael Bay. I ain't gonna say shit about yeah, him. Yeah. Except that I love uh, Michael Bay for what he is. I, you, Michael Bay uh, is not a story uh, guy. You do not shit. watch a Michael Bay you movie know, for the story. You're telling me? You do not me? watch it for the acting. You do not watch it. You watch it because the guy blows shit up better than anyone else in the world. Well, That's there's it. your answer right there, man. Go read anything with Michael Bay's name on it. Well, they've probably <laughs> already seen all of them. You're right about that. But no, I will so. have the name of this movie up ASAP, and I will try to post the trailer up if they've got it on YouTube. Uh, all right. Dude, you guys, you guys all have to see this okay. movie. It's going to be hard to find, though. You're going to have to track it down because it's not going to be in Blockbuster. Well, she'll type it up on the internet. It'll come up in 100 places. They can get on the internet somewhere, I'm sure. No, they, no, but you actually have to get it that way. But, so, uh, anyway. He's checking his phone again. You got, he's right. done that checking, like four uh, times yeah, it's, tonight. It, 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 hey, man. You never know when Hancock might have to go out there and, and save somebody. So. Yeah, but, <laughs> or, or when Acock might need to go out there and save somebody. I didn't want to put it that way, but you never know. You never know. I, I, people let's, have different ways of helping people. Let's wrap the show up. Okay, no, it, and before so. we get out of here, I just want to apologize. I fell behind on a few things this weekend. Uh, it's I worked my ass off this weekend, and I want to just say I'm, I meant to get a bunch of reviews up, but it just didn't work out that way. It's, <laughs> it, was, it was hard, man. It, it was hard. That Hellboy review, we saw it on Wednesday. I'm trying to figure out how it worked, but it finally got up. It should have been up earlier, but it's just it just wasn't possible at all. So, and I'd just like to say I took the last four days off. So if you're like, wait, where you Carlisle asked for all these questions and and he hasn't read. That's because I took I asked you the questions and I took the weekend off. This was uh, Warhammer 40k. The fifth uh, edition came yeah, out this we weekend, go. dude. I spent all weekend playing Warhammer. It well, was awesome. I did just the opposite of taking a weekend off. I had to. Yeah, the only thing I did was go to a housewarming party on Saturday. So I'm on. We're gonna try and work out this whole thing of getting this stuff out there. Maybe we need to get some more help or something. But it happens sometimes. I hate to do it because it does not. It's not beneficial to the site. But we're gonna get into. We're gonna get on top of things at some point. But thanks for being patient, people. And uh, after you see this, I'm still working on the fucking uh, <laughs> the uh, journey to the center of the earth review as we speak right now. Like when you leave, I'm just going to be finishing that up. So anyway, that's our show for tonight. Uh, whenever you're listening to this. Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night.